I am so excited that you clicked on this video because I have some Christmas in July DIYs for you using scrap wood. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa, pregnant mama of four. This little baby boy is due in October, and I would love to have you a part of my crafty family. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, and I would love to have you a part of that. So if you guys love farmhouse decor, then you've definitely come to the right place because that is my specialty. And I have a huge goal of getting to 100K by the time baby boy is born, like I said, in October. And I can't do that without your help. So if you would do all the YouTube -y things, hit that thumbs up, share this out, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's jump into today's video. I don't know if I'm stupid or crazy or maybe a little bit of both, but I wanna do this video. All right, this is my current situation to get scrap wood. Okay, friends, you can do these with your eyes closed. And I know I'm going to get comments that my husband doesn't have a trailer full of scrap wood, blah, blah, blah. I get that, you guys, but hear me out. If you go to neighborhoods that are building houses, nine out of 10 times, the builders or the workers or whatever will gladly give you scrap wood. Uh, my husband works in a lot of up and coming neighborhoods and they will literally just give us scrap wood. Like if I ask them, they will leave it there for you. So you guys don't, don't discount dumpsters and stuff like that even like in the back of Lowe's you just have to look if you look around you can really find a lot of good stuff scrap wood all kinds of stuff so anyway I grabbed these scrap four by fours they were all different sizes I painted one with my moss waverly chalk paint I painted one of them with my crimson waverly chalk paint and I painted the other one with I forget the cream color but um, once I was done painting them and I just gave them a distress coat because this is rustic decor. We're not trying to be perfect here and I'm just having fun with this. So with the excess paint on the other brushes, I just kind of dry brush to give these a little bit of contrast. I always tell you guys, if you do not like dry brushing, leave that part out. Next, I go in with this neutral colored ribbon that I got from Walmart, and I were just making presents here, obviously. So I start by just measuring out a piece and then gluing it around one side of the four by four. I repeat that step on the other side. Next, I measure out a piece of ribbon for the bow, and then I cut three identical pieces. Once I was done cutting my pieces and I had all of them the same size, now we're gonna make a bow and I'm gonna show you how simple it is. I know a lot of you guys have trouble with bows, but I will also link a video in the right hand corner just so you have it. There's 11 different bows there for you guys that I made super simple. Now this, all you have to do is kind of fold it like a cancer ribbon and then I like to use zip straps, the really, really tiny ones from Dollar Tree. I feel like you just get a better hold in the middle and your bow looks a lot better. And to cover up that zip strap, all I did was just wrap some jute around there and secure it with some hot glue in the back. And then I took some hot glue and glued my bow down to the top of my present. I repeat that step for all three of my presents. Next, I take some random greenery and I just cut that down to size and glue that greenery down on each side with some hot glue. I once again repeated that step for all three and I took some 
different color berry berries that I got from Dollar Tree last year. I wrapped them around a paintbrush and then cut it in half just for some little embellishments and glued those on as well. I'm very much a person who I like um, the way things look like they look all the same, I guess. I don't know how to explain that, but um, some people probably would put like different stuff on all of them. Um, now, obviously, this part is going to be a little bit different, but all in all, they look pretty much the same, and I like that matchy-matchy type of thing. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Would you guys have made different bows? Would you have made your presents look different or would you have them match like I did? Now, I still felt these needed something, like I said. So I take these little tags that I got from, I believe, either Dollar Tree or Walmart. I used my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain to stain them and then I just uh, sanded the edges to make them look old and weathered. I then pulled out a transfer that I had from last year at Christmas time and I just transferred on the little images. I love the way Chalk Couture comes out. It's so smooth and the images are literally perfect. And not only that, but when I'm in a time crunch, this really helps me to make amazing projects. And I'm actually really excited, you guys. Right now, you guys can get any transfer 40% off for literally $9.99. It's kind of like Cricut, you know, access or um, whatever subscription. You just pay the $9.99 and then you're able to get the designer status, which is 40% off. So I know a lot of you guys always complain that you can't afford it. And with this new option, um, I'm excited because a lot more of you are going to be able to afford it. So if you want any info, um, I will leave all that info in the description box for you. So anyway, I just embellished my little um, tags. Now, originally I was not gonna do a third one, but once I put them all together, I put some jute on, um, you know, I tied some jute on it and glued that down to the top. And I absolutely love the way that these turned out. You guys, look how these started and with just a little bit of TLC and a little bit of DIY, look how absolutely stunning these are. They literally look like I got them out of a high-end store and I am so excited for the holiday season. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these presents. So for the second DIY, I took this piece of scrap wood and originally I was going to do something totally different, but I started off using my ivory Waverly chalk paint and giving this piece of wood a distressed coat. Once I was done painting the sides as well as the front, I just kind of went in my stash and pulled out a few embellishments that I thought would look really cute. So I pulled out this Merry Christmas wood sign or wood tag ornament, whatever you'd like to call it, that I got from Dollar Tree last year as well as this little sleigh. I also pulled out this barn. I don't even know where I got the barn. I think maybe Walmart. So I just kind of pulled things to be able to visualize um, and ultimately I decided on the Merry Christmas sign and the little sleigh. I then went in with my mini chip brush and my gel stain and I just dry brushed all the way around the edges as well as in the middle to make it look old and rustic. If you don't like dry brushing, just leave it out. Next, I glue down the little sleigh and then I also dry brush that Merry Christmas with a little bit of rub and buff. I wanted that gold sheen on it. And then I did glue this down. Now I was looking at it and I was like, okay, I hate this. It's, this is no. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, girlfriend, I cannot put this out on the internet. So back to the drawing board, I removed that glue very carefully and easily. Um, and then once that glue came up, then I pulled out these snowflakes and I cut them apart because they were attached as one. 
Next, I use my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain once again and stain all of my snowflakes. And once they're dry, then I go in with my Ivory Waverly Chalk Paint with that same chip brush. And I just dry brush to make it look kind of rustic and make it look like snow. Um, I just love dry brushing. I thought I would get away, away from it, but I, I just love it, you guys. I just visually need dry brushing <laughs> so anyway once i was done i glued my snowflakes down i glued down the merry christmas to the middle i attached a um, red and white buffalo check ribbon right underneath that merry christmas with some hot glue and that was it you guys i personally love the way the second version turned out but let me know down in the comments did you guys like the first version or the second version better Okay friends, last but not least, and might be my favorite, but per usual, I can never pick a favorite. I know you guys will let me know which one was yours, but I just took a bunch of random pieces and I took my square and I just kind of penciled out some trees and I, help, I had my husband help me cut these just because you guys... I just don't have the strength that I did uh, at one point and I can do it no problem but it's just much easier with his help and I just appreciate him so much you have no idea so anyway I just kind of penciled out some random sizes of trees and then I took my saw and I did actually cut I think like one or two and then I went in and I said can you help me babe and of course no problem he literally jumps at anything I ask him to do he is the most amazing person in the entire world but anyway once um we were done cutting those pieces then i took it to the craft room and i kind of cut the ends off because i wanted the tops to be a little bit more rounded than pointed and then i also um sanded down the edges that way there were no like splinters or anything like that now i knew i had five i was like okay maybe i'm tripping maybe i only um penciled out four but you'll see here in a minute that i did find the fifth one on the floor i must have knocked it over but i sweep them off just because you want to have a nice clean surface uh, not completely clean some of them are dirty and i didn't mind because again rustic decor <laughs> <laughs> but I stained one of them with my Dixie Belle. I painted one of them with my Crimson Waverly, one of them with my Ivory Waverly, and one of them with my Moss Waverly chalk paint. Now for the fifth one, you will see here in just a few minutes that I did end up staining that one with my Dixie Belle as well. Next, I go in with this little hanging shelf that I got from Dollar Tree. I use some lightweight spackling to cover up those holes. And once the lightweight spackling was dry, then I just sand that down smooth and give it a distressed coat of the same ivory Waverly chalk paint. While the paint is still dry, I take that same brush that I just stained my little Christmas tree with the Dixie Belle Voodoo stain in, and whatever was left on my brush, I just kind of dry brush that into the wet paint. I also had to put a little bit more out to dab on my brush, and I just love that effect. It makes it look like it's real wood, and um, it just gives it a different effect than dry brushing. So once that was dry, then I went in with my sanding block and I just sanded down all of the edges as well as some of them I did a little bit of dry or a little bit of sanding like in the uh, middle of the tree and then here is where I find that little piece. Now because I wanted all of the colors to look cohesive and I didn't want it to be too much white or too much brown or too much of any of the colors so I wanted this to look a little bit different so I sanded down the edges and then I just used that same brush that I had painted the ivory tree with and I dry brushed the ivory all the way around the tree. So originally I wanted to do different scrapbook paper and I tried so many different things you guys. 
<laughs> I tried so many different things and ultimately I went in my chalk couture stash and I bought these last year never got a chance to use them so you know what I love chalk couture I was in a time crunch I don't normally upload DIYs on Fridays but I was just so excited to get this out so I figured you know what I am using these transfers I love the way that they all go with each other so here goes nothing I did the candy cane one on my red tree and just transferred that on with my white chalk paste and then for the white one I transferred on the words with my eucalyptus chalk paste. I actually couldn't find my jar so I had to use a paste packet which those paste packets actually go really far. I only used a teeny, teeny bit on that one. Um, and then for the last tree, I did not want all of them covered with a design. So for the last one, I took these little holly leaves and the little embellishment greenery, I don't know what you wanna call it, and I transferred that on with my gold paste. Once those were all dry and I set those aside, like look how gorgeous that gold looks against that moss, like wow. <laughs> but anyway, um, next I take this little candle. Now I loved the label on it, but I couldn't find anything else that would kind of fit on here. So originally I just painted the label, but once I try to put the ribbon on there, I didn't like the way that it looked. So I did just heat that sticker up um, this sticker was really annoying to come off, but I did eventually get it with a little bit of patience and a lot of heat. Um, I removed it as best as I could, and then I took that same ribbon that I used on the presents, and I measured, cut a piece, and then hot glued that around my candle. Next, I took a piece of Buffalo Check uh, red and white ribbon, wrapped that around and glued it, and then made a finger bow with that same ribbon and glued that down to the middle with some hot glue as well. Like I said, if you guys have trouble making bows, um, I did link it in the cards in the beginning of the video, so look out for that. I know a lot of people have trouble making bows, but I promise you they're really not that bad. Next, again, I have to embellish this, so I just take some random Christmas greenery, glue that down on either side of the bow, and then that was it for this candle. Okay, so this is the beauty of projects, right? So I was gonna actually stop after the candle when I had glued down, I forgot I lost the footage, I'm sorry you guys. I laid out my trees and just glued them down how I liked with some hot glue, just a dab, and then I also glued down the candle to the left hand corner. Now, once again, I was gonna stop there, but I felt it was missing something. So I went in my stash, I grabbed out this house from Dollar Tree, and I took off the top piece that looks like a roof, and I painted the back with that crimson Waverly chalk paint. In just a distress coat, you do not have to cover it if you don't like, but I personally like the way that it looks rustic, once again. Next, I just draw some lines every inch, go in with my utility knife, score it a few times, and then I kind of scrape out those lines to make them look like real genuine lines, like in a barn. And then I just glue that roof piece back down to the top and give it a distress coat of that ivory Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take this greenery that I once again had from Christmas last year. I pulled out a huge, huge bag of Christmas stuff from last year in my shed, so I was really thankful that it was accessible to be able to do this video. But I also wrapped some berries around once I was satisfied with the size of my wreath and then glued that down to the top and glued it to the right-hand back corner. Once again, I thought I was done, but I was like, oh, a, a deer or something back there would look really, really cool. Originally, I picked this scrapbook paper to use, and then, see, this is the problem, you guys. I second-guess myself so, so bad, and I so wished I would have used that scrapbook paper. Now, looking at it from, you know, the editing view, I absolutely love the way that it looked, but I was second-guessing myself. I'm like, no, it's too many patterns. They're going to hate it, blah, blah, blah. 
and I wish I would have just stuck with what I originally liked. But anyway, it turned out beautiful nonetheless. I had this deer in my stash for years, you guys. I've had this since I started YouTube like three years ago. So I pulled it out after I cut the pieces and didn't like it. Then I stained it with my gel stain. I dry brushed it with some of my gold rub and buff. I put a little jute bow on his neck. And then I took some um, of these stars out. Now, I had no idea what I was going to use these little wood cutouts for. And when I was rooting through my drawer, I came across these. And I was like, wow, these little stars would be perfect for the tops of these trees. However, I only had four. So I just dry brushed a little bit of rub and buff on the stars on four of them. I attached them to all of the ones that I felt looked right i figured since the moss one had the gold already then i would just make a simple jute bow and glue that to the top of the moss and gold tree and save the last star for the one with the words i absolutely love the way this turned out you guys i'm so proud of it it's super heavy super high end and i literally made it with scrap wood and a few different embellishments that i had in my stash let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these projects do you guys want me to do another christmas in july or are you ready to see something different so thank you guys so much for hanging with me today thank you for being with me diying on a friday i know you guys love it as much as i do and with all that being said for info on ketones how i literally lost 60 pounds in six months um, check the description box as well as the pinned comment for any chocotour info and any ketone info those are my passions i love crafting and i love to help you guys feel better again so anyway with all that being said thank you so much for being here i appreciate you guys more than you'll ever ever know and don't forget to do the youtube -y things hit that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already we need to get up to 100k by the time baby boy is born so we can have a big celebration you guys i can't do it without you and um i know that we can do it so if nobody has told you today you are absolutely amazing worthy and stunning you're gorgeous i love you with all my heart i appreciate you i'll catch you in the next one bye Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.